Celtic hit seven. Rangers are in a Kelly heaven. Shankland eats all the pies and Aberdeen season officially dies. Welcome back, guys, to Fog Football. It was a crazy week, midweek action going on in Scottish football. And it's that crazy. We have to start in League One. We're crazier. Nil-nil between Sterling Albion and Hamilton. Well, this Academic. result's just took all the hype at my intro. It really has. But, uh, yeah, we let's need just to, move on. We need, yeah, let's just move on, man. What is it? There's not say? much to say here, is there? Championship, this is where shit hit the fan, though. Is Air United beat Partick for free. And I will concede that any chance Partick Fissel have of winning the uh, the championship is gone. That's back to back defeats now for the Fissel. And they must be pondering what could have been, because with hindsight, we're beginning to see that Dundee United actually aren't all that great. They drop points again, and Partick must be thinking, had they won their last two games and got six points in the bag, they really... They really could have done something here, but they didn't, guys. That's all that matters. And you know what? Dundee United absolutely got pumped as well by Airdrie. I did not see this one coming. Near Jim Goodwin. And he got himself sent off. He didn't take it lying down too well. And is he actually doing a good job? Yeah, I said he'd be sacked before we hit August. But, I mean, he's top of the table with Rafe Rovers. Out of the cups quite early as well. And he's not like he's waltzing the league, is he? Out of the cups early, aren't you? Out of the possible, fucking earliest possible ent exit. That's what I mean. Well, well, what? Well, oh, thanks for clearing up the obvious here, Colombo. I mean, come on, what the fuck is that all about? Jesus Christ. Right? Anyway, let's talk about Inverness, so, Nil to Fermo and Athletic. Are we now. not going to talk about how good Airdrie's win was? We're going to talk about it when we get to the league table. All right. All right. Look at that. <laughs> oh, what a win. What a rush. Queen's Park, six. Arbroath, no. We had goals from Patton. We had goals from Silly and Sheridan, Dom Thomas, Liam McLeish, and even Stuart McKinstry got himself on the score sheet. So I 6 0 part, like Fissel. Uh, it's Queen's Park. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> <All right. laughs> Rafe Rovers, no. Greenick Morton, no. Rafe Rovers needed to win this game, didn't They're they? They're bottling it, man. How many nil nils have we seen here? Too many for my league. But I, I don't think actually a draw against Great Morton the way they're playing is too bad. But I think when Dundee United get beat, you're kicking yourselves, aren't but you? But what that does mean is Rafe Rovers go joint top with Dundee United. It is 51 points apiece. Nothing in it. 13 points between the top two and Partick Thistle. And at this rate, can we really look past Greenick Morton? Have they got a good chance now of securing third place? Which, in reality, doesn't really do fuck all, considering that you have to play the fourth place team if you finish third. But still, I mean, I guess you could be looking at maybe five grand worth of prize money. So every little every little helps, as Tesco once said, every penny helps. Or was that Tesco or was it Asta? Maybe an Asta. Who cares? If you shop there, you're a bum. But see, you could get a situation, right, where Partick Thistle and Greenick Morton play each other last day and all they need is a draw, both of them. And why would either one of them try and shaft the other one? You know what I mean? They could just match fix and play for a draw. Because third and fourth, it just doesn't matter. It's an absolute mess. Some One of them, need, the third place team needs to get home advantage in a one-legged tie. I suggested that a couple of feds ago. I think that's the, I think that's the way they fix it. For me, yep, third place team should get, a ho should get the home advantage and then whoever wins that should be away to the second place team. And then I would probably have... The second place team and the eleventh place team, the Premier League, play at Hamden. Yep, I mean that would be fair enough. And if it's two teams that realistically can't fill it, then let them play at a, let them play in Edinburgh, Tynecastle, or Easter Road. There fair you enough. Go. For me, that that should be how you do it. Our Broth have conceded a whopping fifty-four goals in twenty-five games. That's immense. That's not that bad. It's only just over two goals a game. No, it's awful. I don't think it's that bad. In a, in a league where there's not really a clear worst team, and considering what they've been doing in the past few well, seasons. Well, I think probably it's a clear worst no, team. No, but look at their goal by the, by compared the, to the rest of them. By man. the looks of it, our Broth is a clear worst team. Anyway, let's move on to the yeah, Premiership, the league, the league that matters. All right, the game that was on Sky, one of two, sorry. Livingston won at Motherwell. Talking three. about clear worst teams, Levy, what happened to you? Took the lead early on, couldn't hold it. What a big win this would have been. But three goals later, and that one no lead. Evaporated. Mullerwell took advantage. They get the win. Mullerwell now looking like they can potentially push and break into that top six. And Livingston are looking dead and buried at the bottom of the table. And I mean, a couple of weeks ago, I believe Martindale came out and said the only guy that could save him 
His only last hope was Derek Adams. Has he got a new hope with Neil Warnock? He might, and how crazy would that be? Imagine Levy relegating Aberdeen. That'd be a massive moment. Davy Martindale getting one up on Neil Warnock. Like Neil Warnock in the twilight of his career, it would be it would be an absolute shite bomb like on top of him. Twilight and, uh, his career, he's already about four feet under. He's already more than halfway there. <laughs> I'm halfway as there. Bon Jovi would say. Anyway, two 0 Aye, uh, two 0 not good. St Johnston with a, a deserving win in my opinion. Aberdeen, yeah, created chances, but I don't think Meetoff had that much to do. I think the attendance is bullshit. By the way, that did not look like there was ever fourteen thousand people. There. But I think that includes season ticket holders that didn't turn up. So you got to fact that, and that is paid. I'm pretty sure the attendance is paid seats. What about seat sub? Or do Aberdeen not believe in that? Who do want to fucking sub in to watch this pish? <laughs> well, no, let's be honest. That's true. Sub? You'd rather sit on the bench. Seat sub my ass. Anyway, good one for St. Johnson. Craig Lafine is doing a good job, despite what Michael Stewart stay, uh, says. And uh, yeah, he, he will keep them up. I've no doubt in my mind. Where did this one come from? Celtic 7... Dundee won. Rangers aren't capable of beating a team like this, so it was pretty unique to see Celtic Football Club pick up a big win by winning 7-1. It's definitely not like Rangers beat the most informed team in Europe last weekend, five goals to nil. But anyway, Celtic were worth the win, absolutely, even if Dundee forgot how to defend for pretty much every goal bar. But, well, I mean, to be fair, three of the goals were good. I'm not going to take it away from them. Maidas, McGregor's, and uh, Daniel Kelly's. The other four... Absolutely comical. I mean, if Dundee only go in 2-0 down at half time, there's still half a chance. But when you're going down 5-0, man, going into half time, or 6-0 even, what, what, what chance have you got? And then to some some matters up, their bus broke down and it had to get towed all the way back to Dundee. I think they should have With that. the front end hanging up in the air. I would have made the defenders walk home for fuck's sake. The front end hanging up in the air and the back end has collapsed. No, the back end <laughs> certainly collapsed in this game. No, Defence was terrible. Uh, definitely to blame for four of the first five first half goals. Just a really poor performance for Dundee. Uh, I said a few games ago that it was looking good that they were going to get top six, mainly because the teams behind them just couldn't put any form together. But Dundee, in my opinion, are in serious trouble now because not only are teams like Hibernian beginning to look like they might start picking up results, They've also already closed the gap. So Dundee don't have that buffer anymore. They're only a point ahead of Hibs and with, what, five games to go before the split? I would not be surprised if Dundee miss out in the top six and I think we could be seeing them finish maybe even maybe eighth, ninth by the end of the season. Yeah, easily, man, because when you're playing like this, it's it was awful. You cannot defend like this. doesn't matter who you play against. Yeah, if you play like this against St. Johnson, they're probably not going to score seven, but you'll lose. To be fair, though, Tony Doherty did accept that they were garbage tonight and he wasn't happy with the defence, so... Well, you know what? They drew... I think I do think we'll see an improvement next time. They drew the second play. half. With 10 men, that, that's, that's true. So whatever he said at half-time must have worked. It must have. Anyway, Hearts drew 1-1 with Hibs, and that was across the full game. Lauren Shanklin scored a penalty. Elimando Marcundes scored the opener. Bit of a dead Edinburgh derby, if you don't mind me saying. I thought it was a good Edinburgh derby. No, I think it was a bit dead. Well, like, Sevco? Haha. <laughs> no, but in all seriousness, it wasn't on Sky, which is obviously a big bummer. Why is this not on Sky? Well, what? neither was the Celtic game. Was that a deed game? Come on, at Rangers wasn't on Sky. Was that a deed game? It wasn't, wasn't Derby's, my friend. Who gives a shit? Who, who gives a shit? It wasn't on fucking TV. That's my point. Yeah, well, neither was the other games. Aye. I'm not saying they were all live. Oh, and so Livy Mullerwell was on Sky. Does that mean it was fucking buzzing? The greatest game you've ever seen? No, it's a, D Darby's different, man. Darby's got to be in TV. It's a fucking joke, it ain't. You should be backing me up here. Le Le Levy Mullerwell, game of the season. Brilliant. Must who, watch. Who's saying that? I'm, I'm glad I recorded it. So Hold on, we already went through the Mullerwell. No, I wouldn't. Uh, I would, How many people... To they, don't t they don't tell their attendance. <laughs> that mean there was Zero. None? It's a big, fat, fucking zero. Anyway, guys. Hibs. Hibs that could have won, didn't win. Lauren Shankland had a pie. That's Bit of a the... bullshit penalty. Lauren Shankland caught a pie. Pretty amazing, actually. Hibs fans were throwing shit at him. Um, they threw a pie at him. Lauren Shankland caught the pie, took a chunk out the pie, and then threw the pie back. So it's not really uh, good there, I guess. 
done a good image here that uh, Lauren Shankland's like, you know what? He took one bite of the Tain Castle pie and was like, this tastes like shit and threw it back. Imagine it had like laxatives in it, man. As soon as he took a bite, his arse went. <laughs> <laughs> oh, arse would be fucked if it shit. Yeah, would so. <laughs> Wouldn't like to see that. Anyway, uh, Rangers defeated Kelly. That's why we're all here, guys. Everyone thought that this was going to end 1-0 Kelly. But Philip Clement went, no. And then he made the substitutions, fixed it. And Lawrence and Tavernier saved the day. Rangers won and uh, they've won the league. I'll come out and say it. That's the league wrapped up in a pretty wee fucking boat because the next four games is 12 points. It's quite as easy as that. But... Ah, big win for Rangers. Done well to come back. Don't think they were convincing tonight. Don't think they had their best performance. Butland made a couple of good saves. I thought, come on, we're unlucky to lose this game. But here, as they say, that can be a sign of champions. Sometimes you have to win games you're not necessarily great in. And I think that sums up Rangers' performance tonight. Weren't good. We're trailing at the half, but done enough to get themselves two uh, early goals in the second half. A bit fortunate. Will Dennis should have saved the first one. Second one was just a, a mix-up at the back here. Nimdaba really should have just cleared it instead of trying to, uh, you know, play his way out of danger. So, yeah, I thought Rangers were lucky with their two goals, but in the end, they got the win. They got the job done. They kept their two-point gap at the top of the table. So, yeah, it's good for them. Good for them. I mean, I've talked about previously, I've gave Rangers an 80% chance to win the league in Celtic 20. What would, you, what, what would you put it in terms of percentages? And I said that, after the Hearts game, obviously this game's now passed. I would probably keep it about the same because Celtic won 7-1. If Celtic struggled to win tonight, I probably could have maybe given Rangers a bit more percentage. But what, what do you genuinely think? The ball is in Rangers' court. The fact that the old, the first Old Firm games at Ibrox is massive. Well, I don't think it is because Celtic have already beat Rangers at Ibrox. So nah, it. it is massive. That, that, that was Beal ball. I know, I know they beat Clement ball as well, but... Yeah, what's such a point? Yeah, but that was at Parkhead, man. And I think Rangers should have got something in that game. Right? It's not my fault that Lax La- Lax is his Dessers. <laughs> Lax is his Dessers are struck, man, on the way to fucking go, is it? Probably not, no. Right, and in this game, the worst VAR decision of the season for me, ball whipped in. I have no idea how this was not given. His hand is near touching Ben Nevis. And it hits his hand, and they don't give it. Didn't even go to VAR, according to Stephen Robinson. So, uh, well, no, what's going on? Enlighten me. Yeah, terrible VAR decision. Not a clue. Bullshit. Not a clue. But let's have a look at the league table. And this is how it follows. Celtic obviously closing massively in the goal difference. Massively in the goal difference, you say? Aye. Wow, only one in it. What do you mean, wow, only one in it? Trying to rip the piss out of me? Aye, pretty much. Well, they are. Yo, that... Celtic need to take their wins, man, because it looked like they were going to go top of the league, and they're not top of the league anymore. So that's all that matters in my book. Uh, Hearts, they extend their gap over Kelly. St Mirren gain a point on Kelly. Dundee, who looked like they were going to wrap up sixth place, haven't. Aberdeen are only five points behind. Dundee, despite being awful, St Johnston beating Dundee's put them level on points. Ross County, you know, that's the difference. Like, if Ross County, if Ross County actually beat... St Mirren, they'd be two points behind Aberdeen. Levy are, what, eight points behind? It's not, well, seven points behind Ross County. They're 11 points behind everyone else. It's just not going to happen for them. But in terms of this league table... It doesn't sound like it's going to happen for us, to be honest. But What do you mean, happen for us? But I tell you what, right? See, come Saturday, 5 p.m., Rangers will be five points clear. And see this whole gimmick that Celtic fans had tonight? Oh, we're top of half time. Out the windy. Out the windy... Out the door. And will Subscribe they? Subscribe and come back for more. Out the windy and you'll be back some more. Right, right. Anyway, till then, guys, peace. 4am special. You know the drill.